Hi again everyone. This time we're going to look at cubic functions once more but we're moving across to exercise 8f and this time we're going to be giving equations in, uh, in factorised form. So quick reminder, when we have the function x take alpha, x take beta, x take gamma, the alpha, the beta and the gamma value represent the roots of the equation and once again A is still the vertical dilation factor. So let's try the first one. We have the question y equals x by x take 1 by x take 3. Now that first one with just x I'm going to imagine as x take 0. That's a bit more like it. And that gives me, well, the vertical dilation factor is 1. It's as if there's a 1 there. Our first root of the equation is 0. The next, pardon, that should have been, that should have been the Greek letter beta, is 1. And the third one is 3. To sketch this, I will mark the coordinates 0, then 1, then 3. Now because A is positive 1, uh, this it, it, we, we need to do what we call a sine diagram. Those are the roots of the equation where the graph will cross the axis. But let's just imagine what happening to the left here of the origin when x equals, pick a simple number, pick negative 1. If x were equaling negative 1, my equation would read negative 1, then negative 1 take 1 is negative 2, then negative 1 take negative 3 is negative 4. I don't really care what that comes to, all I really want to know about is that that's a negative value. So. On the left of the origin, the graph is below the x-axis. Uh, if I pick a value between these two roots, between 0 and 1, say a value of a half, substituting into the original. So then I'd have 1 half subtract 1, that's negative 1 half, and then 1 half subtract this is negative two and a half. Again, I don't really care what the value comes to, but I have a negative by a negative by a positive, so this would be a positive value. So between the first two roots here, the graph is positive. Uh, I should continue checking, but I think we're going to get the idea. If I pick a nice easy value between these two roots, say the value x equals two, I would substitute and I'd have two now yeah, 2 take 1 is multiplied by 1 and 2 take 3 is negative 1. Again, that's going to be a negative result. And finally, if we pick a value over there beyond, say the value x equals 4, and then 4 take 1 is 3, and then 4 take 3 is 1, and that's going to be a positive result. So this thing that we call a sine diagram we mark the roots of the equation, so that's 0, 1, and 3. And then we just draw, okay, to the left of 0, the graph is negative. And then it crosses through, and then it was positive there, then it crosses through, then it's negative there. And so that's, that's the, the sign of the function, positive, negative, etc. And when I come to sketching this, it helps me to realise that I should have a graph that's increasing here through the origin. We have a local maximum, then back through this route, and a local minimum, and then off we go. At the risk of going a little bit too long, we will quickly put that equation into I probably don't need that one anymore. Into here. So I will have X x take 1, x take 3. So there's 
the three routes that we thought of and we got the signs correct with our max, our local maximum and our local minimum. Okay, thanks for watching.